This video will cover the topic, graphing an absolute value equation of the form y equals a times the absolute value of x. To graph an absolute value function of the form y equals a times the absolute value of x, first we plot the vertex, and then we plot a point on either side of the vertex. Finally, we draw two rays, originating at the vertex and passing through the points on either side of the vertex. Let's break it down. First, let's review what the absolute value means. Any term within absolute value bars like these always equals the positive magnitude of the value inside of the absolute value bars, regardless of whether the value itself is actually positive or negative. In other words, if the value inside the bars is positive, then the bars act like regular parentheses. If the value inside the bars is negative, then the bars are like regular parentheses except we will change their final value to be positive. So for example, the absolute value of 2 is positive 2. Nothing changes because the original value inside the bars was already positive. Now let's consider the absolute value of negative 3. The absolute value bars tell us to change the negative value inside to a positive value, so this equals positive 3. So what happens if we have an absolute value function of the form y equals a times the absolute value of x and we want to graph it? Consider the example y equals 2 times the absolute value of x. This is of the form y equals a times the absolute value of x where a equals 2. Let's make a table and plot some points to see what this looks like. If x equals 0, then y equals 2 times the absolute value of 0. And since the absolute value of 0 equals 0, y equals 0. If x equals 1, then y equals 2 times the absolute value of 1, which is 2 times 1, or 2. If x equals 2, then y equals 2 times the absolute value of 2, which is 4. Let's graph what we have so far. The first point we found in our table was 0, 0. The second point is 1, 2, and the third point is 2, 4. So far, this looks like a regular linear function with a slope of 2. Let's see what happens when we choose some negative values for x. If x equals negative 1, then y equals 2 times the absolute value of negative 1, which is 2. This is because the absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1, and 2 times positive 1 is 2. If x equals negative 2, then y equals 2 times the absolute value of negative 2, which equals 2 times positive 2, or 4. Let's plot these points and see how they fit with the rest of our graph. The first point we found was negative 1, 2, and the second point we found was negative 2, 4. These points seem to form a different linear function with a slope of negative 2. What we found is that this function looks like two regular linear functions that meet up at a single point called the vertex, which in this case is at 0, 0. If we know where the vertex of an absolute value function is, we can graph this function by first plotting the vertex and then plotting one point on either side of the vertex. How do I know where the vertex is? In general, when we have an absolute value function of the form y equals a times the absolute value of x, the vertex is 0, 0. In more advanced functions, this may be different, but for this topic, the vertex will always be 0, 0. What if a is negative? Great question. Let's do one more example. Consider the function y equals the negative absolute value of x. This is in the form y equals a times the absolute value of x, where a equals negative 1. Because it's in this form, we know that the vertex is 0, 0. Let's plot that. Now we will plot a point on both sides of the vertex. We can use a table to help us find these points. Our vertex has an x value of 0. So one possible x value to the right of this is x equals 1. The negative absolute value of 1 is negative 1. One possible x value to the left of the vertex is x equals negative 1. For this point, 
y equals the negative absolute value of negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1, and the negative sign outside of the absolute value bars will change that positive back to negative 1. Now we can plot these points. 1, negative 1, and negative 1, negative 1. Now that we have a point on both sides of our vertex, we can draw lines from the vertex through each of these points to create our graph. And now we're done. So, to graph an absolute value function, first we plot the vertex, then we plot a point on either side of the vertex, and then we draw lines connecting the vertex to both of those points. Right. 